Hey, this is Zoe Williams of The Voice of Reason and of course Zoe What Morning Shows. I am returning to implore you guys to support us in any way you can. That means if you're sharing on social media, liking, subscribing, and of course contributing and donating. We really need it, especially in light of the new YouTube filters that are targeting our languaging. So now we're at a position where they're not even monetizing our videos anymore. No more commercials. So we can't monetize the views that you guys provide us by watching the show. So now more than ever, we are asking that you guys continue to support and fortify the movement not just by watching the shows but also contributing to the shows we need your help more than ever now and if you want us to continue this high quality high grade content we're gonna really need your help i'm zoe williams and i approve of this message thank you for tuning in to the voice of reason and the zoe what morning show peace Offering is the truth, nothing more. I'm a relationship hack. Run up and get touched up, suicide. And all of y'all know my style. I excel, then prevail. Run up and get touched up, suicide. That's it. And all of y'all know my style. Ladies and gentlemen, ah, uh, shitocracy. Yes, the shit has hit the fan. The voice of reason, Zoe Williams, back in the building. Today is my Zoe What Morning Show. And I got a crew, an august panel, in the building. We about to get litty for ritty. Let me talk about it real quick. You guys just joined us. This is Dash Radio. Dash Radio is found at DashRadio.com, or you can download the Dash Radio app on the Google platform, or it was that Google Play, guys. That's Google Play. Or you can download it on the iTunes platform. I guess that's the iStore. Seven million listeners over here. It's what we do. Wow. The Dash Radio get down. This is Hot Button Radio. If you're trying to hear us live, you go to dashradio.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see hot button. Click on hot button at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays, and you'll find Zoe Williams doing his thing. You can also find me here on Mondays, 5 to 7 p.m., doing The Voice of Reason as well. Two shows on Monday. We're going to turn all the way up. But listen, you already know before we get to our topic We do community empowerment. What is community empowerment? We just did all of these uh, Facebook Live and (coughs) IG Live and Periscope videos promoting today's show. And I talked to all of the heads of this radio station who allow me to promote black businesses for free. And I had to put these heads... And and I'm going to say primarily for free because there are some businesses that have a little bread and have given a little piece of change. But for the most part, 98 percent, it's free. You know what the man told us? Says thousands of dollars a minute. Thousands of dollars a minute. We promote black owned businesses for free because we know they're fledgling. We know they're struggling, trying to get a foothold. In a business world And most times they're not going to be promoted To this level So that's what we do So without further ado Let me promote a few businesses right now Number one, let me promote my own Guy Black told me to do this (laughs) The relationship dismount How to stick the landing when exiting a toxic relationship You can get it at my website IamZoeWilliams.com Also, you could pre-order my new book Coming out in September at the earliest November at the latest I'm still editing It's a tough process The Holographic Relationship Pre-order it now At IamZoeWilliams.com 
I'm going to rattle these off really quickly so we can get it out of the way. Black spot, B L A Q S P O T, black spot, anti social or Afro social networking. It's like a black Facebook. Go support them. The guy who did my website, Triumph Beyond Designs. Please continue to support that brother. My man, Corey Holcomb is in here. 5150. You can go to his website, CoreyHolcomb.com, and order one of the incredible. T- What's your t shirt say, bro? Oh, the one I got on today say, uh, Jesus' mom was a side chick. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. So many companies. If you want to find out the rest of the companies, please go to my website right now and click Community Empowerment. Uh, my homeboy, Hassan McCullough, sitting here. He brings us fresh juices every show. He is the creator and producer of WeJuice, O-U-I-J-U-I-C-E.com, WeJuice.com. Please continue to support that, brother. I'm not going to go through all of the companies today, but I do want you guys to go to the website and check it out. Please support those businesses. And next week, we'll get back to our normal order of things. Um, I'm going to tell you what today's topic is, and then we're going to go to a quick break, and then we'll get right back into it with Dr. G's Toolbox. We want to hear from you as well. The number to dial would be 323-230-4445. That's 323-230-4445. Today's topic, the Anger Mismanagement Show. A deeper look at when personal boundaries are crossed and what to do when you're cool is lost on the Zo What Morning Show. You already know how this round table go. We got smart people in the building and we're about to get really, really active on this topic. We're going to take a quick break and when we return, Dr. G's Toolbox. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, the Zoe Up Morning Show, back in the building on Dash Radio, HotButtonRadio.com. I know it sounds chaotic, but that was a radio clip of the brother Ari Spears on another radio program a few years back. Uh, And we wanted to play that clip. And later on, we're going to play the clip from the 5150 show as well, because we wanted to set the tone for today's topic. As is commonplace, Dr. G, Mark, Dr. Mark Goulston, author of Just Listen and Talking to Crazy, right? He's here now. He's going to set up today's topic for us. Dr. G, your toolbox is live. Hey, so what, what's happened? For those listeners who don't know what the boiling frog thing is, there's a, there's a thing that if you put a frog in boiling water and you keep increasing the temperature, it will stay in there and die. And what happened is there was Zoe being a boiling frog, except he didn't stay there and die. What he did is he punched back. So the boiling frog, I'm a neuroscientist, triggered his amygdala and it hijacked him to saying, I'm not going to do this anymore. And what you need to do, I, I, I've trained hostage negotiators to calm situations on what this is Monday morning quarterbacking literally what he needed to do is to uh, is to let him keep going for a little bit and then look him straight in the eye and say you got to be kidding or something like that and he's going to say what you got to be kidding well what do you mean uh you're uh, you're trying to provoke me so that I don't show everybody how freaking crazy you are how insecure you are how much of an alcoholic you are and you know I'm not going to do that because that would embarrass you that's what you could have done mm-hmm to stay on top of that and he probably would have gotten agitated but that would have been uh you know game point match to zoe without striking a punch but you know we're in such a sick society this whole thing went viral if he'd done it that way no one would have seen it tmz wouldn't have played it so that's just a sort of a commentary on our on our days and there's probably millions of people going to watch that and we hope you watch this show because this show's even better no question and with dr g's toolbox Here we are with today's topic, the Anger Mitch Management Show. A deeper look at when personal boundaries are crossed and what to do when your cool is lost. Ah, Jesus, my whole crew is in here right now. Louis Dix just joined the the fray. In the building. We haven't seen Louis Dix in a long time. Louis Dix has his own show now. Oh, Very funny. (laughs) Talk to him about your show, man. Oh, oh, we do a show uh, on Morris Media called... um, um, 
with the man show in a man's world. Right. It's just tell Paul to say thank you. Yeah, just, we we just TDP. blew up her her brand a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Morris <laughs> Media. Shout yeah. out to the poetess. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and, and, Go ahead. I heard that they have issues. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, Je- Jeff Arnold and TDP. We just sit around from uh, eleven to one on Fridays, and we just talk about men. And we'll we'll talk about this issue and yeah. and, and getting beat up and how you're supposed to respond as a man. And and I've always made it a point. I like watching other people get beat up. So I, you know, I'm not I'm not into getting beat up. I, I'm okay watching someone else get beat up. Wow. But you know, and watching there, you know, I, like and I ran into Corey coming into the into the um, parking lot, and you're just supposed to know when to not fight. You know, right. I mean, you're supposed to know if you're gonna win. That's right. the first thing you figure out. I, am I gonna win can this I win fight, this? or can I not? Or how angry is this oh, person? Wait a minute, right? now. and where are these punches are coming from? Because some people punch you from other stuff. It's not what's happening immediately. It you know, never like, right. like when it I got is. divorced, I, I would hurt you because I'm I'm coming you, way back from there from wrong. that divorce. Yeah, yeah, like wrong. now, I have no reason to fight. Okay, right. and things are really good. I have no reason. You can cut me off, and I'm good. Okay, <laughs> well, yeah, that's not <laughs> no, okay, Louis. Louis, I'm, I'm not. Now. We've seen you on the court. That's not true. Yeah, you well, will get angry. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, well <laughs> that's what I'm about to say. Quit bullshitting, Louis. No, 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 no. Okay, we know you. That's the basketball court. That's why you're out there. To, to let that out, and who? That's right. physical. That's that's right. sports. You know, that's what that's what real men do. Right. But you know, it was really funny watching um, and listening to uh, you guys' show. I had a good time because I had more fun watching uh, Corey watch y'all. Yeah, Corey that, that's funny. What, yeah. That, that's what because Corey, Corey was just writing a whole set while, while watching y'all. He was just this is fine. He just didn't have a pen. I got, I got five new minutes. Yeah, on this yeah. Show. It, it was it was like and then Darlene. Trying to come over like she was going to help. It, it, oh, 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 right, right. <laughs> and she used to be married to Ice T. How the fuck she gonna act like she ain't never seen nobody get beat down? That, that, wow, oh, wow, Jeff. Wow, there okay, it come, is. Come on, no. <laughs> the punching bag. No, no. Okay. and then, and then oh, that no. happened. Yeah, right. Ice T has come right. a long way. He's on, you know. SUV. Okay, yeah. Fuck around and see. All right, uh, lemonade. I for one, I have to. Okay, in all seriousness, bruh. You know you're my boy and yeah. I love you. All right. But I'm very, very disappointed in you, to be honest. Me too. Because this show about many things is about follow through. <laughs> and the way that you did not follow through with that elbow. <laughs> so wait, hold on. I'm let me just answer disappointed. That. <laughs> Thank Your you. Your trainer let me, is right let, in let, here. Let, you're okay. supposed to try. So, so watch. Because let me tell you. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> this man knows me. Kevin, tell him, tell him what the deal is, and then I, I'll reinforce it. Yes, help me out. Well, Kevin's gonna the, tell you the punches you threw weren't the punches that I taught you how to throw. Oh yeah, throw, how to throw. Right. However, you absolutely know how to throw correct punches and elbows. Right. But and let me tell you, let me tell you why I didn't do that. Because I didn't want to hurt him. Let me make him a okay. I'm just being him. honest. Okay. I could hurt him if I wanted to. Of course. If you represent me. Because it's real simple. I could have threw straight punches. I didn't throw straight punches. <laughs> yeah. You could have thumbed him in the throat. I've been training with this dude for nearly two years. So then it's like, I throwing don't elbows, throw kicks, straight punches. everything. <laughs> All that. Straight punches glo- in gloves. Okay. So I, I could have hurt him, but I wasn't trying to hurt him. I was just pissed off. And like that, and like Lewis just said. You put your phasers on stun. <laughs> well, me, I put the phasers <laughs> on stun. Put the phasers let me on tell stun. you why. Let me tell you why. See, a lot of people don't know about this. Louis Dix is one of the only people from the foxhole that showed up to my mother's funeral. April wow. 23rd, 2009. Right? That's when my mother died. I didn't know. Louis was at the funeral. Marcus King. This is when I was doing bad. I couldn't. Our people didn't have no bread. Our people didn't have no money. Marcus King and his wife, Jamie King... Paid for my mother's funeral. Wow. Wow. Her birthday was on the 14th. The show was on the 11th. Mm-hmm. So when Lewis says sometimes you fighting from another space. You in another space. You in another space. And to be honest, there was something in my spirit that said don't go to the show. Because sometimes I'll be in a space. I'll be like, am I ready? Can I handle it? Can I deal with it? Right. Because it's funny. And and Corey be killing me. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Corey's taught me a, a, a lot about confidence in the public space, too. 
And that's why I continuously go. You can't let these motherfuckers right. Rob. He's like a, he like a big brother. <laughs> the motherfucker brought me on stage once too, and was like, "You can't be scared, nigga. <laughs> you be scared, of these <laughs> nigga." Yeah. So you know what I'm saying. So the, the show, paper. the show has developed that. But to be honest, a lot of that was coursing through me. Plus, this dude was touching me. He was disrespecting. Too much. He disrespected D. He disrespected <laughs> Corey, and he he really thought of the bunch. I'm the yep. easiest one oh, to yep. fuck nah. with. Yep. Oh, bad uh, of, of everybody. Wrong. I'm the one you fuck wrong. with, and and That's anybody who one. knows me know. <laughs> right. That's not it. But but do you remember the first time I met you at the foxhole mm-hmm. when I heard you speak? Right. And how soft spoken you are when you know I'm just saying I was teasing you. Right. We was you cracking know what jokes. I'm yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. teasing you, but that guy has um issues. Right. Eric Spears has issues. And uh he I'm just saying crazy. I, I'm just saying he, he, he see Eric Spears is really Hollywood. He's never had to face being in the streets amongst people who you already know you don't go there That's with people right. unless you're ready to do that. <laughs> He don't even know that. He's perpetrating a life right now. But he's really somebody who's been hid in Hollywood mm-hmm. and don't know that ain't nobody playing with you. No. You know Sir, what I'm saying? The punching bag at the end. Right. <laughs> yeah, and when I touched him, I'm telling you, I just got to say this. When I touched him and walked into his car mm. c- to console him, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it wasn't just his fate. It wasn't just his, the physical hurt. I saw the hurt in his eye. <laughs> He was hurt, man. He was like, yeah. I, oh, my God, this really happened to me. <laughs> but when I touched him, I could tell he has never hit the gym. He was soft like a woman. He was like a bag of jello. When I touched him, I was like, what is he He's supple? Did you say that he was supple? He felt like. What's that bag that hang up in the bathroom that your mama wash up with? Oh, yeah. The hot water bottle. The hot yeah. water bottle. That's what he felt like. Oh. He felt like Massingale. Oh. Wow. 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 Listen, <laughs> but let me let me say this, though. I reached out to Corey. I said, Corey, can you get him to come to today's show? Because as a man, I wanted to apologize to him, to his face. Listen. For I'm- what? Because because I'm, I'm that kind I'm that kind of guy. Okay, f- okay. Can I say fuck that first? Let me. Say you you fuck can that. say fuck that, but I'm just saying as okay. a man. Look here. This is the way fighting. This is the way it go. All right. Uh, my background aside, raised in Chicago, uh, second degree black belt before I joined the Marines, boxed in the Marines. I give myself, at, and, and I'll talk about this on the rant. I mm. give myself a decent full house. I got jacks over nines. Oh, here That's, we go. I got jacks over nines. Okay? Every man is walking around with his prior experiences in violence as a poker hand. Mm. You out there bluffing with two pair and ran across four sevens. Okay? <laughs> you ran across four sevens. Now, when it's time to show your hand, it ain't my fault that you got two pair. You right. should have folded it before now. You sure should have. But I, I'm just saying, this. Yeah, go ahead. This is why I couldn't call Aries and have him come to the show. Because he was so embarrassed. I know he did this out of shame. Mm-hmm. He sent a text message to me. Mm-hmm. The type of text message that you do not send to nobody. You want me to read it? It's quick. Read it. Let's hear it. Corey, I know me and dude have an issue, but Cats is hitting me talking about you instigating shit. And I ain't did that. But listen to this part. I'm already trying to decide if I want niggas to get dealt with on some gangster shit or should niggas get sued if you got a problem with me being a man uh, and come at me. Don't take shots. When somebody say get dealt with on some gangster shit, he don't really know. I'm like, you're going to see me. Again, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. Right. somewhere now, when you run into me, <laughs> now what? We have to deal okay. with this. And now wow. you're back to the poker hands. And now you're back to the poker hands. And, and, and I'm not saying wow. I'm not saying I'm nobody, but I'm just saying, you know, it's another level that you're taking it okay. to. Okay. But I know you're stupid and don't know what you're saying. Right. That's why I'm trying to be nice. Wow, because you don't threaten me like that. Wow. No, Louis well, Dix. See the thing, he's embarrassed. First of all, I'm embarrassed, and he, yeah, he, 
he should have just removed himself. That's like when you get beat up, you just don't go around for a while. You just retreat. Right. I don't yes, know about just, that. You, well, you, you do. I mean, you retreat unless they're your boys. Yeah. Now, now we've grown up with boys who you got in a fight, and then that's your best boy. But that's you, why. yeah, that's that. yeah. You right. move that. You move on. That's my boy, my best friend. We've gotten fights, and you just move on. He just lost that one. It's okay to lose, as long the, as you're not dead. Yes, I, it's okay. It's okay to okay, lose, lose, but the yeah, hyena, not like that. No, because he didn't even swing back. <laughs> the hyena don't leave yeah. the jungle because you, the lion is king. You got to swing back, Doctor G. Step in here. Oh, we didn't see that part. <laughs> Dr. G. So so this is so this is to all the white racists out there who are not listening to the show. Do not take this show out of context to say, see, I told yourself all those blacks are just angry. You have a boiling point and it's much lower. That's why you will probably rant about this. You'll write things about this show. Uh, you'll be self-righteous. See, I told you so. Them blacks are just angry. They can't control themselves. You white racists are the ones who can't control yourself. So keep it to yourself. Wow. Okay? Do the world a favor. Yeah, wow. you can't, yeah. Well, white, white folks can't be talking about violence. Kevin, right? then Jeff. Uh, <clears throat> all right, I'm, I'm kind of torn on this because Zoe knows I train him, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't like to see faces on stuff. I don't. He always but, says, "But what's my first? Don't question? use this for evil." <laughs> that wasn't evil. See, he, he knows. He knows. Well, the thing is, I my philosophy is: if a dude never t- doesn't touch you, then you don't have to hit him. That's that's my philosophy. Well, he always, touched me. I don't know well, about that. but he didn't touch you in a vi- he didn't touch you in a violent manner. You he slapped just, my hand down. Huh? Okay. I don't know about that. Okay. Well, <laughs> my thing is when he started invading your space at first, you could you could have handled it and just dealt with it from the beginning. But you gave him some leeway, and so he thought when he got drunk, he kind of thought okay, and he it just went all out the window. So for me, you know, I understand though. Now I just want to say this right off the you know just with a caveat. Everybody who's on this show, probably with the exception of uh, Dr. G, me, Jeff, and Zoe, you're dealing with serial killers in recovery. And what I mean is that's a mentality that we had to come up with where you say the wrong shit and we will smack the shit out of you. That's just that's just how it is. Now, coming up, we've evolved, but that is still in there. I'm trying to evolve it's, for sure. You know, it, it's still in there. Where I grew up, if you call a man a bitch, you might as well have slapped him. <laughs> That, that, again, 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 I, I understand that, but again, I, I, I understand that, but see, again, I understand that, but see, I, I learned how to, I learned how to fight at 10, so I was an angry kid, I used to punch holes in walls and doors and shit, so my mother had to put me in martial arts to calm it down, so in understanding that, there's a way that you can direct that energy, you don't have to fight, see, I'm, I'm all about that, because I've been in a fight before where I put a hole in somebody's head and they almost died, so I understand what? where it can go. I put a, I elbowed a guy in a fight and I put a hole right, in his head so, yeah. mm. and it was a hole like a size of a size of a, a nickel. It was in his head and so he almost died. So understanding that, see, I understand how far it can go. And so you don't you ever you never want to feel that. Trust me, you never want to feel where you hit somebody and right. they're on the verge of death. Right, Too right. Late. So that to me, see, that was my point where I said, all right, I can't. I can't hit, I can't fight anymore. But see, this is this goes back to the classic outburst between me and Lewis Dix was, on the foxhole. This is what a lot of people don't understand about that classic outburst. We ratcheted up so high, so high, so high, and then when it was over, immediately Lewis and I turned to each other and shook hands like, "Oh, it's all good." <laughs> and, and Speedy goes, "No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. I want to leave a cliffhanger. You remember that? He was right, like, yeah. shh, 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 don't." Get, because he wanted it to, to, to seem going. like, oh, Lewis and Zoe really about to go at right. each other. But for years, nobody knew that. They, right. yeah, nobody yeah. knew after the fact. Lewis was like, oh, man, you know, well, thanks for not, again. you know, being. You watch know, it again. Right. If you watch it again. Yeah, I'm gonna do, if you watch it again, the both of you danced up and around mm-hmm. the line of disrespect. Right. But neither of you, to me, disrespected the other one. Neither of you. When you get to a point, there, there's a there's a point where, besides the fact that we cool, we've been cool for years. That's a man. It, 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 if I talk slick to this dude, it might not be the end of it. It might not be. In order to talk slick to a dude and expect nothing to happen, mm. you either think he's a punk or you acting like a bitch. Those tell, are, there's no, telling, some, telling somebody to shut up in mid sentence is disrespect, it's though. Disrespect. 
<laughs> at the highest it, level yes. <laughs> for, for, uh, for over yes. two hours. And so yes. what a lot of people might not have the courage to tell you mm-hmm. is what I have noticed about you, my friend, because you are my friend. No doubt. And, you know, things I noticed about you, we have um, learned to mesh and deal with because I accept you a squad. Because right. I don't have many people around me. Because right. when I anybody around me, I be like, okay, is this somebody that I can be around? You get what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I don't let nobody in my small world because I'm a maniac. And that's real. <laughs> I know right, what right. happens right, to me. Right, right, right. I can't have nobody around me because you're going to see things about me. <laughs> that, you know, you're going to be like, God like, damn. Like, hook off. But so, in all, in, all, in all seriousness, you have a stem that's short on some things. Oh, yeah. And you, my man, and I'm telling you, you have to work on that. Uh, no question. Somebody like Aries Spears cannot be able to get to you Agreed. that fast because you know and I know my brother is insane. Right. Well, I didn't know. We have to protect. <laughs> we have to protect know. our brothers when we when we recognize Oh, this is a fool. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we gotta bring the, we gotta bring the best out of us because mm-hmm. everybody saw me smiling. Right. In my right. mind, I'm like, yeah. this wow. Is crazy, right. yeah, that's, <laughs> he, he that, deserve it. That's what I'm saying. I am going to but, Dr. G like after you. But I'm saying mm-hmm. I, I'm no I'm no better than anybody. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I'm saying, you my friend, I'm telling you, so you cannot let people pull right. that. Beast that we all mm-hmm. have. That's right. right. We all are capable of mm-hmm. treacherous things. Yep. Don't let nobody get to that easily right. because right. I'm telling you, man, everybody going to act like it's you. Right. Even right. if it was because everything that happened to Aries, Aries, in my opinion, he deserved it and he brought it on himself. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, it's something real. Uh, this, I, I know I'm being long, but real quick, I'm going to say this. No, no, you're good. There's nothing more satisfying than watching somebody get out of their car in front of their house and you walk up to them when ain't nobody around and you say, now what was all that you no. <laughs> Right, no. right, right. No. That's what I would teach you. Right. It ain't nothing mm-hmm. more satisfying than watching somebody no, no, no. fold when it's just you and him. <laughs> right. It, 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 it fixes everything inside right. your soul. <laughs> you be like, that's what I thought. That, that's the what response. I that's you, what I thought. You get in your car and you leave. Right. You just test who he is right there when ain't nobody, ain't nobody around. Nobody but us. Right. That's what I teach you, G. Right. No, and, and and I've always compared you, my friendship with you, to my friendship with Cool Mo D. Cool Mo D called me last weekend like, uh, nigga. <laughs> 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 you know? And his first thing was, come on, Zo. The be- you, you haven't tamed the beast yet? It's not tamed. He was like, you too smart for it not to be tamed. So he was like, you got to, you know, you got to handle it. And he is another big brother figure in my life. And he, this is something that I've been dealing with. Now, people who have known me over the years, they see me now and they go, well, shit, he's, he's evolved light years from where he was. But I, I still have an issue with it and I still deal with it. You know what I mean? You're savage in a suit. <laughs> Well, I, I don't want to be. If you saw the video that Corey produced at the end with the punching bag, my God, that was my head was down joke. because I was embarrassed, <laughs> I'm, and I am embarrassed by so, this, Doctor G. Let me get Doctor G. Then you. Okay, so uh, wait, let me. Uh, so here, here's a white man's tip. So take it with a grain of whatever. Um, Are you Jewish or white? Which one? Uh, Dwightish, whatever. Whitish. Well, Jewish. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so okay, cool. So <laughs> this you can check use. the fuck up, Doc. No, this you can use in your, in your divorces. You can use in anything. So there's two kinds of ways of looking at the world. There are people who feel and do and they don't think and people who think and do and they don't feel. Mm. And so what happened is he was a feel-do escalating and he interrupted your ability to think and do. So whenever you're escalating, if you're a think-do person and you say to yourself, there's a feel-do person, you, you let them go on and then what you say to them in sort of a d- semi-demeaning way because they've been disrespectful to you is you can say, looks like you got a lot to get off your chest. Uh, go for it. Don't take all day and don't you touch me. Oh my God. Right, right, and, right. And, and, and they're going to go, what? You could say you got a lot to... And then you step back and you let them vent. It'll be like punching into thin air. 
Mm-hmm. And you say, don't take all day, but don't, do, don't you touch me. And it's a way to quickly diffuse a situation if you, if you take pride in being a think-do person as opposed to a feel-do person. Right. Good stuff, Doc. Yeah. One of the things I, I noticed, when you decide that you're going to be an artist, you, you kind of have a point where you start appreciating other people's art and mm-hmm. who they are. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the things that you, you that's why you and I when we were going at it it was okay that's Joe's art he's smart he's articulate I'm going to give my side same thing with Corey mm-hmm. I, Corey and our, our comedy is so different but I would pay to see Corey hopefully he'd give me a ticket but I'd pay to see him <laughs> because because of his, his the, how deep he digs for his truth right like Corey says things that I would say at home you right. know out loud right, I would right. never say over the mic but I agree with Almost everything he says, especially when he's going hard I put on a women. pool table oh, in no, the I mean, it's just, so I it's, get my money like, back. No, honestly, because I, I, he was probably the only comedian special that I sat up and watched, you know, mm. and, and, and where I, I can appreciate it. You know, Corey has just, I've, I've always wanted to be Corey's friend, but like he said, you can't get in that space. Yeah. It, it's really weird. I, I used to call Corey and say, happy uh, Father's Day, and, and, and I used to the call The Lewis him. way? Yeah. The, the, that's Lewis's I, way. It's only certain people happy I call. Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yo, I peeped Lewis Hart when you told me Lewis was at your mom's funeral. Yeah. None of that surprises me because I, I feel like I'm blessed enough to see who people are when I see them right. speak and I'm in their presence. Mm-hmm. And his heart is 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 moral. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Oh, for real. So I ain't shocked at that when you told me that. That I, Lewis, I know who you are. <laughs> I, I, I know the good and I know the flaws. Right. And I got no right. problems with you, man. Yeah, you yeah. I, I've, I've always, you, I've always I was so happy you. to see you when you got out the car, man, because I ain't seen you. Right, yeah. I've yeah. always, I've always, there's certain and, people you enjoy. I, I've never, I used to work with Aries on um, Mad TV. I used to do the warm up. Oh. oh, wow. And we never spoke. Wow. Oh, you didn't enjoy that? No, I enjoyed the guy. I enjoyed No, check. no, I mean, I you said certain people you work with that you enjoy. Oh, well, Jeff, I like you, too. No, no, I love you, too. Come on, dude. <laughs> no, like Jesus you. Christ. How far back but do Lewis, we go? Can, can we talk about this? L- Lewis introduced me to Bill Cosby. Can we talk about the process around that? Sure. I just spoke to him the other day. Lewis came to me and was like, Zoe, I need you to talk to my son. I need you to do what you do on the radio and connect with my son because he got a th- you know he got a thing he's he going, going going through, through some something shit. yeah this happened before me and Lou went on the foxhole and had that blow up and I never mentioned it on the radio because me and Lou aren't like that that's I, that's my guy and after it was over you know what Lou said thank you okay you see so people don't understand context. And the subtleties and the nuances in the relationships, they take what they see as the truth. There's so many layers behind the scenes, man. And I I, I met with Lou's boy. And we were at, uh, where were we at? We were at uh, some track, some some park. park, And I walked around the the park with the brother and I talked to the brother and and I connected with the brother. And he shifted from there, did he Mm -hmm. not? Yeah, yeah. And Lou thanked me for that, and it was nothing but love and appreciation. See, people don't know. This is why Lou was at the funeral, because Lou is like, that's my guy. He hooked me up with, before I could talk to his son, though, he said, well, uh, Dr. Cosby would like to vet you out before... I allow you. You got to drink something for you? No, I didn't have to drink nothing. (laughs) I didn't drink nothing. (laughs) But he gave Bill Cosby. (laughs) He gave Bill Cosby my number. Bill calls me. And I'm on the phone with Bill Cosby for about two, two and a half hours. And he just questioning me and grilling me and talking. And and you, you all know how I am. When it comes to people that are. More advanced, more lived, more cultured, more experienced, more learned. I just got questions and I'm listening for answers. So I'm listening to the brother. And then two hours later, he goes, OK, you ready? You can talk to him. You should have asked him, uh, how do you put a bitch to sleep? So I have a varied, you know, a diversified experience with different kinds of people. And I've learned a lot through my through my travels and my experience. But I, I got to tell this to people, man. We got to stop idealizing people that are on stage or people that are holding the mic or people that are at the pulpit or, or people that have a, a piece of paper behind their names. They're not perfect people. 
There are no perfect people on planet Earth, and everybody falls short, you know? Dr. G had something, and then, oh, you had something. That's yes. right. Yeah. Um, I hate, I, sometimes I don't like this about myself, but I'm going to be honest. The, the place you're talking about, Doc, where you elevate to, I don't think necessarily applies on a certain level after a certain amount of conditioning. Hmm. My grandfather was this kind of cat where he could be mad as hell at you and would not put his hands on you. Mm -hmm. Or he'll blow your brains out and eat your sandwich and be calm and cool (laughs) as a fan. Okay. I was raised around that to where violence is just a tool in my belt. I don't have to, as a matter of fact, if I got to fight, I prefer to be calm because I'm not going to make as That's many right. mistakes. Mm-hmm. I think that violence has its place. I think that if this were to go to a court, if I think just arbitrarily, Lewis is out with his girl. I've had too much to drink. I don't like Lewis, whatever. I come over to Lewis's table and I say something disrespectful to his girl. It starts an altercation and I get my jaw broke. I take Lewis to court. The judge listens to what I have to say. He should kick my ass the fuck out of there because I had no business crossing a certain line. You do not. uh, This goes back to the Godfather. Women and children can be foolish. Men cannot. Mm. Okay, you're talking about mortal combat when you're talking about crossing a man. That's (laughs) somebody that can take your life. It is not on me if we start shooting and my gun is bigger. That's not on me. You need to pick who the fuck you shoot at. Better. <laughs> okay, Jeff. Thank you. Was that your rant? <laughs> Shit. No, but let's get to the topic. How do you bounce back after you lose your cool? Because people in the media will spin it in a unidirectional way of you should never lose your cool. But that's part of the fucking human condition. Losing your cool. Getting angry. Making mistakes. So my point is, let's highlight how you get back after you lose your cool. Because can't nobody in marriage tell me there ain't been times where married people have lost their cool with their significant other. So how do we bounce back from that? Dr. G? Um, But it's not easy. Look, it's not easy for any of us to bounce back from that. I, I guess the question is, you have to, first of all, wait till you're you've calmed down and then you have to ask yourself do i want to be right or do i want to make this thing better now if you have to be right and you want to be right and you can't be wrong you know then you can't have a relationship with whoever you're with i mean Mm. because it always has to be a zero-sum game and you're always winning and they're always losing so you have to ask yourself uh do i care about this relationship thing right (laughs) i love Corey. Corey, even (laughs) even though he thinks i'm such a wuss Uh, you've used the bitch word with me and i haven't taken it uh you know of course course i don't get violent like all you guys (laughs) Because I'm a, <laughs> Corey said, "No, then you can't show me that." Exaggerating. <laughs> I've hey. never called you a bitch. I don't say bitch. Them fighting words. If I say, if I call a man a bitch, I'm finna fight him. Right. What up, bitch? Are you talking to me? <laughs> no, no. Right. I don't say bitch when I'm talking to men. That's okay. Like I'm every not. man I call a bitch, I know him. Because okay. why like, don't you say bitch when you're talking to men? No, you just don't do that. Where I'm because. from, you don't call a man a woman. Thank you. Right. Thank you. It's, uh, it means let's fight. That's what it means. I've never wanted to fight Dr. G. Nothing has ever happened. That we, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually fond of you. I, I think you are quite oh, I'm a man save, save that clip. to hang around <laughs> motherfuckers you hang around in this studio. I, I, that takes courage. That takes wisdom. That takes a lot. You know what I mean? This that, is so this all you, easy all, with you being the Caucasian male of the show. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so all you white racists, it, it takes courage, not foolishness. Are you listening? Thank you. Hey. You know, I like it. I, I like it. So, uh, uh, Doc, finish your, your thought, and then, you know, we're going to finish what we were talking about, which is how do you bounce back? Okay, so I, I think what I was saying is you have to ask yourself, do, do, I, do I want the... Do I want this relationship to continue? Because if you want a relationship to continue and you only can be right and they can only be wrong, well, it'll continue, but you know, you're beating the crap out of the other person. You're making them hate themselves and hate you for having to always be wrong. Mm-hmm. So you, you might just want to pause after you've gone too far. It doesn't mean you have to recant everything. And Jeff looks like, well, do you ever apologize, Jeff? Do you ever apologize? When you go too far with your wife and you've said something and uh, disrespectful, or I know your wife and I can't imagine you saying that to her because she is a saint in your life. Well, okay. 
here's the deal with, with, with as far as between me and my wife. I go look here. I'm already sorry for some shit. <laughs> I apologize in advance. <laughs> That's your, that's your, that's your, ninety-two percent. That's your New Year's resolution. No, that's the way we roll. Ninety-two percent of of the issues between me and my wife is me. It's me. She, 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 I don't have problems with her. But why is such a low percentage? Why, why such a low? Wow. Per, why such a low percentage? Because of the, because of how fucked up I am. I got a lot of flaws, but. We're not talking about a relationship between a man and a woman because whenever, whenever a, a relationship between a man and a woman goes to violence, the man already lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it is a lose, lose. Yeah. already lost, man. You can't use that, that. So I don't, I, I don't believe so in putting a, my hands on a woman, but you sure can shock the okay, shit well, out of one. Okay, so <laughs> what about what about a man and a man who are business partners? Yeah, and you have to endure afterwards. So. So is it better to make sure that, you know, I'm showing you that I'm the top dog and you better listen to me? Uh, and Well, no. in, a, in, a, mm-hmm. in a business, and again, this is even different than this. In a business format, usually three to six months later, we can tell with ones and zeros who was right or wrong. Mm. So that, that I don't even think that that is, is the same as this. In a social situation. We're talking about a social situation. A man I know and a man I don't know are on the same plane, whether it's Webster or fucking Jet Li. They're men, and I have to stay in my lane with a man, period. Men should always be respectful to each other because this is the truth. I I don't know how to say it no other way, but straight up from where I'm from. Niggas kill each other. Don't play with me. So when people be like, oh, this is business or this is whatever, whatever words you come up with for bullshitting, that's on you. (laughs) But I'm here to tell you, it's something real serious once a man feel like you're trying to play him. Nobody likes to get played, and you shouldn't play with men. When I'm talking to men, I'm trying to be straight up. So when I walk and turn my back, you know I'm good. You know what? You know what, Corey? Hey, that reminds me of Willie D's song, Play With Your Mama. Right. That's the name of the song. You play with your mama. Don't play Don't with me. Don't play with me. You know what I'm saying, uh, uh, Kev? Yeah. Um, I definitely, How to bounce back. I definitely agree with what Corey said. Um you know, first off, dealing with men, men dealing with men, you have no idea. You can never judge the character or, in this case, the gangster of a man just by looking at him. You, you just can't. I've seen the smallest dude knock out the biggest dude. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, it, it happens. So, you know, having the decorum or dealing with, you know, dealing with, dealing with guys up front, you know, equally is, is the best bet. Now, how do you bounce back? If, if, you, if you do lo- allow yourself to go off handle, you can't be attached to the situation. So you have to learn from the situation. Right. If you're constantly going back to the situation and, and beating yourself up about it or what happened, you'll, you'll never get over mm-hmm. it. Right. So you, you got to basically learn from it. What did, what did I do wrong? Own it. What did I do wrong in the situation? And right. how am I supposed to change that part of myself and right. move on? Never be attached to the situation. If you keep going back and you keep and you and you keep going beating yourself up about it, you'll never get past it. Lewis, yeah, I think it's important to, to know your own history and who you are and what kind of person you are, because mm-hmm. then you're able to move forward. You know, if you know that I'm I'm a good person, I'm a moral person. This is what I believe. Uh, something just got out of whack at that time. Then that that was it. That's not who I am. Yeah. If I met you in another place, another time, then yeah, we'd be cool. But then also bringing your history. I know what kind of person you are. Like you showed the clip of him earlier at the other station. So mm-hmm. you know that's just who he is. You know, and and, right. and you got to and you you kind of learn that, especially as a man when you have children. When you step into fatherhood, that's when you, you see yourself. Yeah, and you start yeah, saying, yeah. "All right, okay, let me see how I deal with you know." And then you start looking at. Everyone as a child who had a parent. Right. You're like, all right, he just didn't learn that. Right. He just didn't, he didn't have, you know, when you see somebody do something really foul, you're like, all right, he never had men to tell him not to do that. Right. You know, and, and same thing with a woman. So you kind of say, okay, I'm going to approach that differently. And you know what? That's my story. Like, if anybody gets the relationship dismount, the first part of the book is my history from Alton Park Projects in Chattanooga, foster care. To my mother getting us back, losing me when I was 10 months old, getting me back when I was six, five or six. So I had to relearn who she was. 
I can remember when I first got back. First off, just understand the reverse Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So she loses me, and I get placed in a foster foster home with some good folk. Two black people that had a home in the suburbs in Chattanooga. But the sister, the lady who, who got us, me and my brother who's 10 months older than me, the lady who got us. Now, my older brothers had to go to jail because they didn't have facilities for boys at a certain age. So they put them in jail. So they go to jail. They can see my sister across the street at her new foster care from the jail. Oh, that's some <laughs> so me and my me and my brother who's 10 months older than me, I'm the youngest. We go to the Bynums in Chattanooga. They have us for 5 6 years. They had 50 other foster children filtered through that home, but they wanted to keep us cuz the woman couldn't have no kids. Mm. You see, the woman kept running into my mom in the city and saw the forlorn look on mom's face. And she said, well, fuck it. I got to get this lady her kids back. I got to find a way to get her her children back. So she initiated the process. Mm. Now, that was good for my mother. But for me and my brother, who's 10 months old, older, we got to go back to live in the projects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now be reacclimated. Mm-hmm. You can't be suburb kids in Alton Park. Mm-hmm. Little high yellow, green eyed, <laughs> strange eyed looking mm-hmm. kids. You can't be that That's here. It's a recipe for victim. Do you understand? So immediately, my my second oldest brother, his name is Maurice. Maurice is built like Carl Malone at 16 without lifting weights. That's just his natural build. No weights, just. Yo. Diesel. Nobody would fuck with him. So he immediately took it upon himself because his daddy nor my daddy were in the picture. So he became dad and started teaching brothers how to fight. My my older brother made me fight our friends that we made. So you got to fight these niggas. <laughs> you just you got to go out there and fight them so you can learn how to fight because you're going to need to know how to fight. Period. Yep. To make it here, you got to learn how to fight. So people don't know that history. And that's one of the the saddest things about people. We don't look at people in context. We're taking snapshots of people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is how he's presenting himself. That must be who he is. Man, don't get confused. Everybody's got their fucking burden to bear. And then you got motherfucking armchair quarterbacks out here on YouTube making videos about niggas they don't know (laughs) in anonymity. And and, and, and analyzing it. Right. In anonymity. (laughs) We don't even see your face in anonymity, <laughs> making videos and deep analyzation of who a person is. Two hour videos. Come on, man. <laughs> it was somebody saying um, on his rate on his podcast or whatever how I sold the tape to TMZ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I read that. And it I was like, Corey who cut the tape. It was Corey who told out. us we're gonna cut it out. Like, he asked us at first, niggas is making opinions. Corey go, no, nah, we're gonna cut it out. It was Corey who did that. People want me to be the bad guy. There's <laughs> well, no, not everybody, but there's some people who want me to be what Aries thought that he was gonna talk me into being on the show because he was saying we the same type of dude. And right. I was like, no, <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not the same no, type of dude. So people out there think I'm some bad guy who. Wants to egg on stuff for. I'm just saying, like if TMZ was finna give me some money for the tape, I'd have got with Zoe and be like, "Hey, Zoe, check it out, man. These people want to give me some money. I'm uh, they gonna give me this. I'm gonna chop it up. I'm gonna give you this. <laughs> you gonna be out there. We you get what I'm saying? <laughs> but they found a way to get the tape. I don't know how they got the tape, but I'm gonna find out because I got lawyers for that. I'm gonna find out how did y'all get the tape. By my show tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I will know it was a fan. exactly how Had they got be. the date. Yeah. Well, if it's a fan, cool, but I'm going to know. Because, yeah. mm-hmm. wow. uh, you know what I'm saying? They put my character in question about who I am. But so this show is about um, uh, how to bounce back, how to bounce back. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if I may ask you, in, in light of everything that happened, you know, what did you learn? And how do you feel you can avoid... <coughs> Um, 
uh, uh, being in that situation again where you put hands on some um, insane fool. <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly what I learned. So that's what he is. I'm going to tell you exactly what I learned. And to be honest with you, it, it, Modi. Modi told me this a long time ago. And, and I want anybody out there who's dealing with this shit right now to listen very fucking carefully to me. Modi says, Zo, you're going to have anger issues until you get comfortable in volatile situations. Hmm. He said, avoiding the volatility of the situation creates more angst. You think if you move away from it, it'll somehow never be triggered. He said, but all you're doing is leaving an untreated trigger. It's just there. He said, challenges the conduit to growth. You got to put yourself in a situation to where you can feel yourself and be observant of yourself when you're in it and go, okay, now it's time to pull back. He said, but sometimes you lose yourself in those moments. And he was like, you lose yourself because part of you wants the, 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 uh, um, what is it? Uh, the power that comes from your reaction. There's a there's a there's a power that goes, yeah, let me show you that I got strength. And he says part of that is you want some of that power. He said that's not good power. There's real power in, involved when you conquer yourself, but you can't conquer yourself unless you're in the moment. You have to be there. So that's what I took from it. And that's what I'm trying to do, because a lot of times I'll be like, oh, man, do I want to get clowned? Do I want to? How am I going to respond? I got to put myself in a situation to where I learn how to overcome it in the heat of the moment. Let me ask you something, Zoe. Uh, let ahead. me ask all of you. Um, uh, I think if if you can't let go of the resentments you have in life, mm -hmm. then you're cruising towards anything to trigger you into, well, I'm going to finally get them out. And so, uh, mm. so I think if you can find a way to let go of the resentments because they're just eating away at you, they're putting a chip on your shoulder, they're making you kind of high maintenance around other people, but I think when you can find a way to let go of the uh, resentments, and I'm not saying it should be easy, I don't think you're as triggerable. But when you're carrying all this resentment, mm -hmm. you're, you're not looking for a fight, but or if it comes to you, yeah. oh, it looks yeah. like I'm going to get it all out now. And right. so, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and I think that's the challenge. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know you if never it's agree. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's Chicago. I, I, I grew up... Uh, I was very articulate and saw a lot of cats. Yeah, what happened? Uh, uh, I know, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Now, that's funny. Uh, All right. Put me in your I, was ranch. Getting, I was getting my ass whooped on the south side of Chicago. My family got tired of it and they put me in martial arts school. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I just, I can't swim this way with this, y'all. I don't see. No, you're other, right. You're right. Other than because I didn't have the fear that you had, so I, I, I was fortunate when I didn't have the fear. Fear is going to make you protect yourself. You're going to hide from the world. So I was fortunate to not have the fear of all you people. Well, I don't. I don't know that it's about purely fear. Well, it turned okay? into uh, no one's going to make me afraid. Work. Where where I grew up from, you cannot work purely from a place of fear. Well, you At can't survive. Point, can't survive. No, exactly. At some point, motherfuckers got to know where you are. On the doorknob food chain. They got to know <laughs> where you are. If you lose a on fight. The if I, food I lived chain. on 60th and Damon. All the fights I lost. There was nowhere for me to go. But to and from school. That yeah. just said okay this nigga right here on the food chain. At some point, And I'm sorry. I don't think Zoe did anything wrong. Uh, other than not following through. To say, well but when you <laughs> found out his faces was on stun. At some point. Point. The accountability has to be on the individual who is socially out of line, not the <clears throat> not the person who does what comes after that. Stay in your fucking but, lane. But that, that that's true until the point, though. That's why, you, again, if you when you're the first Speaking to hit, of when you're first to hit, that's when that's when the charges come. So Zoe being an involved person, he understands. All he had to do was just walk away from it. He could have walked out. He could have. He could have did a mil million different things. Corey, get your huh? man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He could have did a million different things. Come get this fool, but Corey. The, that's what he's talking about. The gangster wait, wait, wait. zone leaped over that zone. Now, <laughs> and, I got. I got. Check, I got to check something with Joe. It's a movie check. called Three Hundred. 
<laughs> and I'm just here to wait, tell wait. you, <laughs> this dude. I, I, wait, 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 oh, wait, stop. And finish the, finish the thought. No, this dude, Leonidas, even though it's a movie, he handled it perfectly when this messenger came over oh, and uh, was trying to um, <laughs> let him know what the big bad uh, right. dude finna Xerxes. do to him. Mm-hmm. But he was talking disrespectfully. He came into Leonidas' kingdom with the heads of other kings. <laughs> he talked crazy to his woman. <laughs> Uh, but Leonidas was very patient. Was. But when he took him there, <laughs> it's like this is Sparta. He kicked him, <laughs> kicked him down the hole because it's like I'm no punk. You cannot yeah. try me like that. I get it when somebody has been taken there, but it's very impressive mm-hmm. when it takes a while. To get you there, right? It was two hours, especially if it's some. Um, I'm hours, telling you, man, minutes, you gotta, you gotta watch. Minutes. Okay, I gotta, yeah, I gotta <laughs> I check. Saying, it was two Let me check something out with Aries Aries is not worth it. I think I just, I figured, I just it was, it, I'm glad it happened because it helped blow up a lot of stuff we're trying to do. <laughs> oh God, his face was used to help out. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Doctor G, so, so then Lewis. Okay, so here's my read. So I don't think you believe you did anything wrong. What you feel badly about is to certain people you're a role model. And so if anybody takes what you did out of context, which they will, and they spin it in an ugly way to, to increase the uh, ra- racism and prejudice because of this incident, there's a part of you that feels a certain responsibility because you're, 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 you're a social figure and you have no control over how people are going to twist what you did. Mm. I don't think down deep you did anything wrong or feel you did anything wrong because he clearly had it coming, but to the extent that people <clears throat> will take that. No, I, I do feel like I I did something wrong though. That's the difference. What'd you do that was because for me, I feel like whenever I lose control, it's a spiritual demotion. There it is. That's how I feel when, personally. When a guy's able to like when talk I and lose, make you physically that's do what I'm something, saying. then, right. then when, you've lost the battle. And no ambulance <laughs> came. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel that way. Like even even if there was no blows thrown, if I feel like I acted out of out of context of me. That's when I feel like, okay, I, I, spiritually, I've been knocked down mm-hmm. a peg. And I've always gone through that. You know, I've always had, like, if I had a, an emotional explosion or an, a, an angry explosion, I've always come back and went inside and said, okay, what the fuck happened? You know, I try to understand that. So uh, Lewis had a point, and, and then we got to go to break and come back to Jeff's rant. Yeah, because I, I know Jeff got shit to yeah. say. <laughs> no, I, I look at it as something deciding that. I'm going to work from love and I'm going to work from who I am. I always wanted to be the nice guy. I want to be the guy that people liked and say, okay, he's a nice guy. And sometimes that can get you in trouble. People try to step to you that way. Right. But I, I, I always always have this thing about myself like, okay, I'm, I'm one of the most important things when I got in this business was for people just to say my name, Louis Dix. Right. And no, that's, that's what he's about. And you're able to, and that's one of the things that, you're able to control people's thoughts about you and what you're about. Nobody knows what mm. I do when I go home. Mm. Outside, it's like, oh, it's Louis Days. He loves his family and all that. But once I'm inside, I, like Corey's saying, I, I got my own dirt. And, and that's my dirt. I don't need to let you know that. Because right. once, once you know that, then you're going to try to use that against me. Right. And that'll make you blow up. Right. When people start saying, you know, you, you can say anything you want about me, but you don't know the truth. If somebody right, right, right. know you putting your business out there, right. that's what can get to me. Yeah. I'm like, I had this fool around me. Right. Yeah. And now you, oh, yeah. okay. Just for that? Just so you can right. get that little bit? So I want to say something uh, with, mm-hmm. with uh, Kumo told you about being in the situation, and then that's when you grow from those situations. So the ultimate uh, meaning of the, the word control or the etymology of it is to slow your roll. It literally means that mm. control, slow the roll. Mm. So you can only do that when you're put in a situation where you're over, you're in overdrive. That's, that's right. And that's so what he was saying. That's when, that's, that's when the ultimate essence of control comes into play. And when you when you're not able to slow that, that's when you feel you've lost. And mm. I understand Zoe. Zoe is a super calm cat. He he has two sides. Uh, people don't two, understand. It's, it's Gemini. It's two sides. He's Gemini. It's, it's he's, two niggas. And he's literally both of these dudes. It's <laughs> not like he's faking. He's a he's the gangster over here, and then he's the spiritual dude over here. And that day he felt the gangster one, which I know you. I know you like being a dragon more, but I know you. You on the Phoenix. I just shit. never <laughs> felt. I never felt so nothing that was that out of control because. Aries is not a threat. I'm like, ah, but his, I will but his beat mouth, your his mouth, was, his, his mouth, and this was going overdrive. Yo, shut up. Boop, boop, boop. I mean, it was. You ever get in a fight with somebody? I understand. 
<laughs> well, you don't even feel like it's a fight. <laughs> you just be like, what the fuck is he? You ever grab him? Say, say, say something you else. You got a shoulder. Bah! Don't put that up. Right, like, like, it's more like a whooping. Right. Like you touch like you, you my child. I said if somebody fight you and they hold you. Right. That means they don't respect you. Because when you uh, play an opponent, you like, yep. you coming right. with yours. Yes, when Aries out of it, like, who you say something else? Just say one more thing. If you say sorry, I'm going to you in Because even if you, if you hit me, you not going to knock me down. Dude, it's a monster inside me. Don't fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. Hey, I'm listen. saying everywhere in the house, there's, there's people everywhere. Ah. Anybody could lose it, and I know he does not have the strength to hold what his mouth is talking right. about. But see, and I, I hope didn't know you that. see this, Aries. Come say something to me. Yeah, uh, yeah on that same thing. Uh, the the biggest lesson here is uh, well, one, it is possible to provoke what you do not deserve, and two, uh, never let your alligator mouth get your butterfly ass in trouble. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, <laughs> Okay, look, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, Jeff's rant is going to be crazy. <laughs> Zoe Up Morning Show on Dash Radio, Hot Button Radio. It's live right now. Callers, if you want to call in and express how you feel about bouncing back after losing your cool, the number to dial is 323-230-4445. We'll be back at 2.2. Holla! <laughs> That's a Jeff Brown produced track. Welcome back to the Zoa Morning Show. We run a little bit behind because we had that TMZ video, that live interview here. Welcome back to Dash Radio, Hot Button Radio, Zoa Mornings, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you want to call in and chime in, we're going to make space for you guys today. The number to dial is 323 230 4445. Jeff Brown, are you ready, man? For your intellect, Brown. Oh my God, Jeff Brown. I'm ready. I'm C- ready. Come back. That. Okay. Shout out to <laughs> shit. Shout out to Corey's dope ass Chevelle in the dr- nigga. He, that's crazy. Does everybody need to know he has a Chevelle? Yeah, yes. <laughs> that motherfucker is fly. I was like, who's Corey? Jesus. And I forgot a- he was an old car dude. Okay. Anyway. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. All right. Back to my rant. All right. In the world of ass whoopers. <laughs> 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 Back when I was uh, 19, full of fire, piss, and vinegar as a Marine, my ass whoopings was like matches. You step on my foot, I light one. You look at me wrong, I light one. Now that I'm 52, my ass whoopings is like road flares. One, I don't know how many I got. (laughs) Two, I only pop them in emergencies. (laughs) Okay, you're going to have to break in my house. I'll let other shit ride. I'll let other shit ride. But you put your hands on my kids. Uh Okay. With that said, both of those are in the context of behavior in a particular reality. In the reality of manhood, the way I was raised, there is a certain protocol that you do not walk past with any man. Now, you can say what you want to about Steve Harvey. We all have our thoughts, positive or negative. But one of the things I respect about Steve Harvey is that if you say something foul about Steve's family, his people, it's over. You don't have to worry about Steve's bodyguards. Oh, yeah. You don't have to worry about Steve's lawyers. You got to worry about Steve because Steve will jump on you. I believe, <laughs> I believe that a man is not only judged by his actions, but he is also judged by his words and how his words follow his actions. Aries is being judged right now, not because he was drunk, not because he was belligerent, not because he was disrespectful. He is being judged because his words did not follow his actions. His words were those of a dude that was going to put some hands on somebody. When in reality... What you saw was a, a modern day version of the scene in Tombstone when Kurt Russell walks into the bar and takes the bar over from Billy Bob Thornton talking all that shit. He did talk over everybody. You're right. Go ahead. He was talking shit. When you talk shit, you need to be prepared to back it up. I just don't think he has anything to apologize for. I'm, I'm sorry. 
I believe as a man, I'm responsible for these things. I think that as a man raising sons, I raise my sons this way, that you're going to have to know, know how to protect yourself. And once you do, you don't have to demand respect. Your countenance will command respect. Mm-hmm. Aries has put himself in a place where he has to helplessly demand respect. And the yelling and screaming and flailing around that we see him doing in public is actually a cry for help from the place that he has put himself in. And that don't have nothing to do with the people you run across. The thought is on Aries. It's not on Zoe. I love you, bro, but I disrespect. I no I, 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 dis- I disagree with you no this worries, time. No I'm done. I got you. I got you, <clears throat> Doctor G, and then Lewis Dix. Okay, I got a tip for you, Zoe. Um, you know, men commit suicide, get drunk, drive into trees because of humiliation or anticipation of humiliation. And if by some chance this thing humiliates him when he gets sober. And that happens. I think you can justify it to yourself, but there may be a part of you that says, you know, I contributed to that final humiliation where he had a lapse in judgment. He got himself smashed. And did you hear he drove into a tree and he's freaking dead? Now, you don't owe him anything like that, but I'm just saying that knowing that men get suicidal, get suicidal often out of severe humiliation, I think what's clear from that thing is the person who humiliated themselves was Aries. Okay. I have not, a question. Zoe. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, so yes, it's just sir. a suggestion. Yes, sir. So so to the extent that <laughs> Zoe might, uh, you don't have to follow me, you know, to the extent that we make this right, mm-hmm. I mean, you don't know where he's living and if he's really embarrassed and people saying, I can't believe what you did. You set yourself up. If he goes okay. and does something stupid, ends up dead, I think Zoe might Hypothetically, say yeah. in that particular situation, to me, Zoe is no more a catalyst for his suicide Let's just say he drove into the tree. Zoe is no more at fault no. than a goddamn tree. Is the tree at fault? He ran into the tree at high velocity. That was his <laughs> doing. What Aries saw was what happens when a big bat meets a wood chipper. Well, you okay. Know, you know, right. I, That's I, it. One last I, thing. I, I used to be a suicide specialist. I did mm-hmm. this for 15 years. I intervened with them, and, and it was really exhausting. And one of the things I would tell these highly multiple tempters, and this is the only thing, I said, do uh, it. <laughs> well, I was, <laughs> actually someone called me and said I don't know whether to go to Las Vegas or kill myself and I said why don't you do both but that was another so, do it. No, we're no, listening doc go okay. on. But, but one of the things I would say you know, if there were multiple attempters and I realized it wasn't yeah. my fault I'd say my only thing is I don't want to be the last call you make and leave a message before you kill yourself mm. because even though it's not my fault I don't want to say, where are you, doc? You didn't get back to me. Now, I, was a, I was a doctor. You know, now, I wish I was Corey saying, uh, you, know, you know, I disconnected my phone. Sorry you couldn't reach me. Wow. Lewis. Uh, I think yeah, Corey. this is a quote. Uh, you measure a man by what you can get him to doubt about himself. Wow. 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 One more time, Lewis. You measure a man by what you can get him to doubt about himself. Damn. And there's wow. a lot of doubting going on in that video. Right. No, <laughs> shit. Damn, Damn, Lewis. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Corey? I, I want that job as a suicide counselor. Oh, my God. Here oh, we go. I don't even know, don't even know they it. had some oh, shit like that. Oh, yeah, you'd be like, you bullshit. Why are you talking to me about it? <laughs> well, for, you, we Corey, should be mopping you up. No, Corey, for you, you, you do a GPS in the local gun store to them and say, I just found a place that might be open for you. That's right. <laughs> No, but I want to say, no, 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 I'm saying like, the main thing I want people to know is when Aries was talking about coming on my show, I had major hesitation because I knew he was reckless and I just didn't know how to verbalize. You're going to wreck yourself because you're going to get exposed for who you are. I got guys who watch my show religiously. Uh, One of them is Gooch the Great. Gooch. Man, Gooch found so much dirt on Aries. It's like when you come on 5150, you are going to be researched. By a nation. <laughs> and, and, and Aries, you are the last person. 
Because that whole thing you did with the man on your back rubbing the oil and you kissed yeah, him in the mouth. I saw that. What? Yeah. Y'all haven't what? seen this? Uh, yeah. That's just one thing. I saw that. It was 5150 <laughs> was the worst thing that could have happened to Eric. Get Aaron. the fuck out of yeah, here. And I just didn't know how to say it. But the only person who knows that I con- I was concerned about Aries and his career was Freeze Love. Because I was oh, yeah. like, Freeze, what do I tell him? And Freeze was like, bring him on. <laughs> <laughs> let, him, let him see what it is. <laughs> and he wasn't saying it to be mean. He just was like, Corey, you can't save him from himself. Right. Let him be who he going to be. So I took a chance. I let Aries on. <laughs> And you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Everybody saw what happened. What wow. Wow. Maybe this was the bottom. Yeah, remember that was it. He had a bottom. Maybe this out. is the bottom out. God wanted him to fail. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes God wants you to fail. <laughs> and if he God. didn't and if he didn't bottom I, out, you know, like, yeah. that's right. If you he's gonna keep falling if he don't bottom out. Failure at happiness. God was like, he's fuck a that. Failure at happiness. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay, everybody always talk about God's love. How much did God love Pharaoh's army? Oh wow! How much did God love Goliath? A motherfucker got to fall every now and then. How much did God love Mary when she gave that pussy to the Holy Ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in to the Zola Morning Show, we are off the rails right now. <laughs> the world is listening. That's, that's why I would. That's why I would pay to go see Corey. <laughs> That is Corey Hilton. That is the joke. Nah, let, let me joke. Let, let me bring it back. Let me let me cycle it back around. Oh, Bouncing back, right? Listen, Lewis is a coach, and coaching young cats to basketball greatness. You know, coaching the teaching teamwork, teaching resilience, teaching how. You know, how to regroup after a bad loss. You know, all of this bounce back shit, a lot of people take for granted because they look at conflict as a pothole in the road that's way up the street. Mm -hmm. So they figure, uh, I'll deal with that when I get there. You know, that's why I want to come back to you and and just really circle this thing back around. Bounce back. How do you do it, Lewis? How do you how do you coach those kids to deal with it? Well, you you have to you have to prepare them. Here's the thing: not not for the game. You prepare them for the game in practice. Mm-hmm. That, that, wow. That's what you got to do. You got to right. prepare them, for, and you got to create situations for them. Right. And you got to create, and then you got to know where their temperament and where their spirit is coming from. As far as if a kid is having issues at home, it can, it, it can be a reason why he's not paying attention in, in on practice. the floor. Yeah, right, absolutely. right, right. You know, it's absolutely. like a kid. Like just this transition, we had one kid. Whose mom was remarrying and the stepkids was moving in his house. And I knew he was all. He was disconnected from the floor. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Lewis, do you think it's wrong to tell a high school child you're coaching that hoes ain't shit? Do you think that's wrong? (laughs) Yeah, no. Because I've had that talk with with, with a couple kids that you, these are two things you gotta look out for. Because these are little black kids in white schools. You gotta look out for the girl getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you gotta look out for when you go up and up in their neighborhoods and it's Mulholland Drive and all them and they want to break into the Jewish center. You, you're not Jewish. You're right. trained to say girls in certain situations. Yeah. But when you relaxed, they bitches and hoes. <laughs> and I have embraced that. I have embraced that. I say bitch more than I say um, young lady. Because mm-hmm. there are more bitches than Because there's, there's a lot of bitches out here. So to the women who know who they are and they don't Conduct themselves like a bitch. Don't get mad at me, but bitches, I need you to claim who you are. Yeah. Your multiple baby daddies and your vaginal reconstruction surgery proves. <laughs> no, I, I, I that your body belongs to the game. <laughs> Doctor G is over here, like <laughs> no, no, he's. he's, he's I'm, right. t- I'm taking notes. That's why I, I love Corey's truth. See, right. that's what I'm saying. Certain people here for the truth. For us, mm. us soft, us not soft men, but uh, men who just don't want to say that. We, we, that's why we go pay to see Corey. That's, right. That's so because Corey is saying it. Also, yeah. it's built up pain inside your heart because you know the truth. And when you run from it, I'm telling you, it stays inside of you. But every time you let it out, and you don't have to let it out disrespectfully, but when you let it out, 
I'm telling you, you can feel your body heal. Relax. What I said earlier about walking up to somebody when they get out the car around their house and talking to them, <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't say walk up to them and start a fight. I said just walk up to them and say, hey, man, so what was you saying? I'm telling you, when they ball up in front of you, because that's what most of them do, <laughs> and, and, your body is like released from all that was held in because you see who they are. And you know what? I saw you do that once at the improv to, um, to Del Rey. D-Ray. D-Ray. You went up to him. Something had happened, and you went up to him. Y'all were close, and I just happened to be listening. You were like, hey, man, what that, 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 And he was like, well, no, it wasn't that. That didn't happen I, like I that. I love D-Ray. <laughs> it's just D-Ray, a different type of dude. So my wisdom keeps me out uh, away from him on everyday stuff. Right. That way, when I see him, I can love him like I want to. Right. But I know the flaws in him. I know the flaws in me. So I play it. I, I play it perfectly. Right. That's right. why I say you got to take care of your brother. Right. Sometimes you got to get away from him to right. take care. Of him. You got to stay away from. That. You yeah. got to stay away from from people who good. y'all flaws don't mix. Right, but you didn't make it a big thing. It was just a right face to face thing, and he just you could see like oh Corey was giving him some truth. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like like I said, this is why I loved the fact that my my two oldest children are in basketball. Because it taught them how to how to be, you, you know, basketball is a team sport, so you can't just be an individual. Mm-hmm. You have to be considerate of other people, and then depending on the quality of your team, you know, you might take some L's. And then on top of that, everything was a teachable moment. I told my son, I said, "Hey, man, you got to start looking at the referees the same way you look at your mama. Mm-hmm. You can never. When's the last time you won an argument with your mama?" <laughs> You're not going to win an argument with the referees. Yeah. So you got to see them as your mom. They're beyond reproach. Good call, bad call, whatever. They're beyond reproach. So everything's a teachable moment. We got to learn how to do that in our community. We got vultures in our community who wait for these moments and pounce. to spring <laughs> out yeah. to try to to try to profit off of it, to try to use the synergy of your moment mm-hmm. to create their identity. Mm-hmm. Warming their hands by your fire. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. and it, 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 it's really tragic because we can't call other cultures vultures until we deal with the crows in our nest. Wow. We can't do that. Go ahead, Corey. You know what somebody said? The video on TMZ is the only type of video they show where brothers is fighting and acting a fool like that. Mm-hmm. And Corey, by selling that tape, you... Uh, you uh, contributed to y'all looking bad on TV in front of everybody. Right now, this is what I'm trying to say. Even though, I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't sell no tape. They got a hold of the tape because they got power. TMZ has power. They uh, that dude yeah, Harvey. Right. Harvey is a lawyer. Yep. They have power to do things that you don't have power to do. But what I'm saying to you is this: about everything, when people say something about you on this internet. Please, everybody, listen to this. It's very important. Nothing nobody says about you on the internet should get you upset. Thank the only you. thing should get you upset is if they're in your face Thank talking you. to you out of pocket. Agreed. That's when you have to fix it. But the internet is made for guys who not tough to type yeah. tough stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Gangsters. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And right. You have to be like, I don't care what they say. Um, Corey not handsome. That would hurt me if somebody said that. Because I know I'm super sexy. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know what I'm saying? If he said it by face I, and, I, and I don't know him, I would be like, man, who are you and why are you talking to me? You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right. So no, that's I agree. the point I'm trying to make. If they ain't in your face saying it, it don't matter. Listen, we're going to take a quick break. And when I come back, Zoe's final thoughts. We're going to wrap it up. Don't miss it. It's going to be a doozy. I'll be back at 2.2. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the part of the show. The final thought. Zoe Williams' final thought. Here we go. Just to summarize. Number one, I do want to apologize to the people who respect me. The people who listen to the show. The people who see me as a as a strong black man in the community. Uh, the, the people who see me as a mentor. Uh, all the people who rely on my insights Um, I apologize to you if I failed you in any way. I I know I failed myself, so I'm sure there's going to be some people out there who, who, you know, who see me as failing them. So I apologize to you for that. But with that said, I'm also going to say I'm going to quote Krishnamurti. 
you know, my favorite philosopher. On his deathbed, he asked his nephew, he said, where is your anchor? And his nephew said, it's in you. Now, this is a frail man in his 90s getting ready to die. Looked like he was going to die in that moment. But the moment his nephew responded and said, my anchor is in you. His nephew reported that Krishnamurti looked like he lost, like he gained 20 years of youth. And he sat up on his deathbed and went off on his nephew. He said, then I wasted 60 years of my life teaching. If, if your anchor is in me and not in you, then I wasted my time teaching this information, this philosophy. The anchor is not in Zo. The anchor is in you. We live in an ad hominem society. Ad hominem Latin to the man. It's easy to attack the man, but can you attack my message? Nobody put out a video talking shit about me promoting black owned businesses for the last four years. But the moment I lose my cool, everybody got something to say. We talked to the owners of Dash Radio today. They said, man, it costs thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars to promote on this platform. We got over 7 million active listeners. You're in the top two, three shows on this motherfucker. It costs to promote. We promote for free. Nobody made a video about that. But soon as some nigga shit happened, and yes, nigga shit happens to good people, to good men. Men, good men have nigga moments, <laughs> right? We do. Hell yeah, we do. Right? And 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 what I want to do is go back again. Stop attacking the man. Everybody flawed. Change your belief system about reverend. Not all there is no holy reverence. There is no flawless reverence. Every reverend you love and hold dear got dirt somewhere. Because everybody has a sign around their neck that says under construction. Nobody is a completed project. So to come to Zoe and say, Zoe, you ain't shit. You're not the voice of reason no more Mm. because you messed up. That means you were looking at me incorrectly. Fuck what you think about me It's really what you think about you What can I tell you That you can use as a tool To finish your construction project Which is yourself It's easy to point the finger But is it easy to stand up as a man And own what you did publicly There's a dude out there Talking shit about me Who who refuses to show his face You can't be an authority If you're anonymous You can't be an authority on shit If you're not If you're anonymous Listen man Everybody has personal boundaries Everybody has breaking points And I'm going to tell you how life works And these are grown ass men in here Everybody in here grown Everybody has breaking points You know what's special about life It never gives you a whole chunk of understanding Life is particulate It gives you bits and pieces. Sometimes you get a bigger piece. Sometimes you get a smaller piece. But if you hold on to the pieces, which are answers that life gives you through through traumatic experiences, you can put those pieces together and get a clearer picture of the puzzle. We got so many people quick to judge, quick to condemn with no contextual understanding of anything. My job as a mentor as a father, as a man, is to use my flaws as teachable moments for the world. Not everybody can get on the fucking radio and hold your attention. That's a gift. That's a skill. Not everybody can sit and develop content that holds you there. They go, wow, this man is saying something to my spirit. But if a brother does not use his flaws as the measuring stick, what is he doing? He's just he's just he's just hot air pushing out ideas. I'm going to say, look, this is who I am. This is me. I'm flawed. I'm not perfect. Anybody who's been following this show and all the new people, Zoe's not perfect. Stop looking at the relationship specialist like he got to have a perfect marriage. Sometimes relationship specialists have <laughs> fucked up marriages and it's from the fucked up marriage that revealed the insight to them. You got an imbalanced perspective of who you hold in a high place. 
because your life is low and mundane. We can't save you from that. Only you can. Right. You you see somebody doing the wrong thing and you've done it as a parent. You pull that kid over your kid and go, look at this motherfucker here. <laughs> <laughs> And then you go see now. That's the exact reason I'm telling you not to whoop whoop whoop. You done use this man as a living mirror to reinforce your idea to your kid. That man ain't useful to you. We all useful to each other. I want to apologize to Aries Spears. Oh, I do. I do. You know, uh, he didn't deserve it. Yes. In my opinion. And I love y'all. Y'all my niggas 100. He was asking. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to say, I want to apologize to that brother. I reach out to you, Aries. My studio is your studio. You want to sit down and have a conversation? We can have a... We can have... I know. It, it won't be nothing to drink. <laughs> you want to have a conversation? We juice will straighten them. Right? And, 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 and then the final thing I'm going to say is this. Zoe Williams does it is fucking a shame that for all these years of us being on Dash Radio and the various platforms we've been on, all these years, all the information, all the insight, and the dumbest shit catches the masses' attention. That's what bothers me. Nobody makes videos about the insight that is revealed on this show. Nobody. But soon as some dumb shit, I told you, some dudes, oh, he's struggling with manhood. Aren't we all? We're men. Ah! Aren't all men struggling with manhood? If you work in corporate America and you're being demeaned and disrespectful, at, uh, disrespected as a man, are you not struggling with manhood? If you're in a relationship that's already on four flat tires and you've been struggling and you're only there because of financial purposes, aren't you struggling with manhood? Stop with these false intellectual narratives like you deep. Every time you have an inflexible, absolutist perspective, you paint yourself into a corner and you are easily defeated. I'm Zoe Williams. That's my friend. All right, nigga. Corey, you want to rap? Corey got something to say. No, I I just want to say, man, look. Them motherfuckers said Jesus Christ wasn't shit. You get what I'm saying? (laughs) It's always going to be a motherfucker with something to say. I just say this, man. This is... This is their dream come true to get a response from you. Right, right, right. That's why they saying it. So it's yep. good you didn't say no names, but it's people who sit on the internet, look to, for something to say about the people who are getting attention. This lady said, <laughs> um, some, some, Corey show, I've seen on real radio shows, woo, woo, woo. I'm like, okay, well, you can say I don't have a real radio <laughs> show, but there's a lot of radio shows on networks can't get attention from TMZ because the streets ain't right. watching it. The streets watching me, right. and you are too. Wow. So you can say whatever you want to say about me. Just keep watching. You know what I'm right. saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> Lewis, where can we find you, real quick, bro? Opposition is needed. Yes, oh. at L E W D I X at Lou Dix. That's my Twitter. Thanks for coming in, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Was, Thank you cool. so much, Doctor G. At Mark Golston, M A R K G O U L S T O N, and of course, Jeff Brown. If a dog barks at the moon, what the fuck? Right. But if the moon barks back at the dog, he just made that dog famous. Be wow. the moon. Wow. I like that. I like that. I liked it when Steve Harvey said it. Yeah. But Steve Harvey didn't beat my Uncle Clifford saying it. I heard that at seven. <laughs> Uncle Clifford! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Hey, go ahead. Uh, Kev? Cop Stop Guardian, please go to the GoFundMe, Cop Stop Guardian, or GoFundMe slash Cop Stop Guardian. It's basically like your own 911 in the car to talk to the police officers. Also, RealNagas.com uh, for the gear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. My man, where can they find you, brother? How can Yo, they get man, out? This we gonna- Saturday, April 22nd, Salisbury, Maryland. We gonna be getting down at the, um, at the uh, what, what was this called? Wacomic Co.? Youth and Civic Center? Wakomico. They was thirsty with that name, but <laughs> Wakomico. Hey, the the, the oh, yeah, most yeah, wanted yeah. to it. We're gonna be in the house doing our thing. And I wanna tell everybody who has good intentions by the world, 
hey man, opposition is needed. When people talking crazy, all that stuff, it grows you into what you need to be. Because if everybody agree with you, the world is cupcake anyway. There it is. I got love for everybody who ten- tuned in. We appreciate everybody for sharing. Uh, you know, sharing their perspectives and opinions. Don't forget, Hot Button Radio tonight, 5 to 7 p.m., The Voice of Reason will be live. Thank you all for tuning in. So what? I'm out. Deuces.